Changing soulful looks with his other friend who couldn't come to our table because I was going to tear his head off. But all anti-Semites like that, they're basically saying, fuck you if you can't take a joke. You know? <laughs> uh, it struck a lot of people as paradoxical that the state of Israel had such good relations with the Ceausescu regime and that Rabbi Rosen was such a prominent figure of Bucharest society and was involved in the, the sale of Jews for exile that he knew was swelling Ceausescu's coffers and that he would also testify on the hill in case of need that Romania was a good country and where most favored nation status could be conferred. Now, does, did any of that strike you as painful that it could be an opposition between the dignity of the Jews of Romania and the exigencies, if you like, of, of the state of Israel, the real politic of Israel? Uh, well, to me, it was uh, a tremendously uh, lucky thing because I was one of the Jews that Israel bought in, uh, early on when Ceausescu just started selling people to uh, abroad, Germans to Germany and Jews to Israel. Uh, Israel paid $10,000 a head for me and my mother. Uh, so I owe the state of Israel 10,000 bucks. At some point I'll probably have to pay it back because I never went to Israel. I think you're the first person I've met who's been bought. Bought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sold. And yet retained autonomy. Well, because once the deal was concluded and I got outside of Romania, there was no point in abiding by the terms, you know, to me, because I wasn't um, going to go to Israel. I certainly didn't feel any kind of loyalty to any Jewish idea because I was not a Jew in any kind of way. Except Perhaps for uh, once redeemed you know. would be the word, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's... One doesn't often get the chance to say that, so I thought I'd take it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe that um, there could ever be an intelligent nostalgia for the um, communist order in Eastern Europe? Well, hell, it's already going on. I've heard a lot of people say things are better under Ceausescu, there was law and order. If you throw a bottle at the policeman, you got arrested. I've heard people say in uh, Sibiu that Nico Ceausescu was a good guy that uh, we had food when he was around, things are worse. There's already, I mean, the place is haunted by nostalgia. It's probably the same in the Soviet Union. A, a tyrannized people force you to ask, why do people ever get to love their chains? And which is what we've been discussing. But in your book on the outside, you ask why are free people, the Americans, who never known any chains, so much love to volunteer to be conformists? Well, it's, it may very well be that, um, uh, you know, conformism transcends ideological systems and that it is just a part of uh, the human desire to get along and not make waves, you know. And uh, when um, the kind of conformism that I talk about in, in, in the United States is, is qualitatively different than the kind of um, conformism that uh, Romanians experienced there because it was uh, coerced, there was fear. Uh, I think there is probably a big difference between Stalin and Vanna White, although I'm tended to, I tend to make a somewhere say that Vanna White serves the same function, you know, to, to make you believe that the world makes sense. Because if you turn those letters over underneath somewhere, there are intelligible phrases, you know, never mind that they are cliches and that they are these things, these endless things, but the world makes sense. You can guess at them. And it's the same kind of feeling of security that uh, Stalin gave us because the iconography of communism, of that period of communism was so comforting, it made sense of the world. And anything or anyone who struck out, out found themselves in a the wilderness. And I think that any time that uh, people experience the wilderness in a certain way, their part of their selves will uh, resist it. This is a poem called Circle Jerk, which um, it's being translated into Romanian, and I had a hell of a time explaining to my translator what actually that meant. As I've told her, was I mean, I had to explain the literal and also tell her it was a kind of political term as well, you know. But. 
So I've seen, you know, all these guys are sitting around, you know, in this circle jerk, you know, figuring out what is going to happen for the next 50 years. Circle jerk. Nel mezzo del camino, I found myself in the middle class, looking at two diverging options, ideology and addiction. My triumph is to practice both. Revirginate or perish. Learn how to read to trees. You never know who might be listening when the class enemy is in the class. Can he be that hombre who walk into town followed by a slow caravan of Toyota vans laden with empty mail sacks ready to buy everything? The shelves, the things on them, the stores themselves, the clerk's personal effects and gives them whatever they ask for. When this hombre leaves, the town wobbles like a great plucked chicken and shivers from cheap wind. This hombre then sits in on a card game west of the Picos and tells this joke to the members of the cabinet. An old Jew asks the Soviet border guard for a globe to see where he should go. After hours of careful study, he returns it and asks, do you have another globe? In the end, we remember not the joke, nor the out of place place where he tell it to the people, but the fact that we all detest living through the adroit manipulations of the small print clauses of our social contract. Therefore, you in the front row, wouldn't you rather do it your way? Don Juan, narcissist whose job is to upset order and the authorities spent establishing it, releases energy teased into being by his hat. Once a man loses his taste for himself, he becomes completely unsavory. Meat spoils from within. Others seep in through the chinks and chomp, chomp their way through heart and gut. Two careless lovers are worth 1,000 bankers. The world is froth over the surface of an untouched hardcore that first looks real, then nostalgic, then Betamax. I stagger from barbecue to barbecue and never see sobriety anymore. <laughs>